and I'm delighted to spend the time this afternoon with Vanessa Wallace. Now, Vanessa has had an illustrious, is having an illustrious career as a Great Britain Paralympian. She's a shot putter, she's done javelin, she's also done the discus, uh, but she started life in a sort of wheelchair club. So, Vanessa, tell us a bit about how you got into that before we get into the other things. Oh, that's always the interesting bit. Okay, so um, so as Phil kindly said, I'm a Paralympian um, and I got here not intending to do any sport. So um, I guess the short version is I was looking for a walking group for my mum um, and on the council website I saw a wheelchair racing group and I immediately thought, no chance, that is not for me, I am not a sporty person. But what got me, what was the hook, was that they said, um, come and try wheelchair racing or learn to push your own wheelchair better. And that's what got me. It, was a, it meant that it was an environment that was accessible at whatever level I was willing to engage with. So that, got, that was a hook. And then there's a little bit more to the story, but I might feed that in a little bit later. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you've gone from being just an interest in getting a bit better at using a wheelchair into full-time Paralympic athletics and stuff. But, but you then, you, I mean, in the middle of all that, I'm guessing, you were also looking at this idea of becoming a gym instructor. So how did that kind of work? You go from nothing to sort of suddenly <laughs> being full on. <laughs> that pretty much sums me up. Well, interestingly enough, um, it was around learning a bit more about then what I was interested in. So I was now, you know, this newbie involved in physical activity that happened to be in a sporting environment. But the thought of being a, a, a gym instructor had never, it wouldn't have come into my head. I wouldn't have thought that that was something for me. Um, but finding out that there was a program that would support me in the way that I needed to be supported, uh, it was a massive hook. It was an even bigger hook than just getting involved in physical activity. So, yeah, contacted Aspire and jumped on the Instructability program and was really, really happy when it actually came through. So, obviously, you've done, you've, in, in your life, you've done lots of travelling around and doing different things and different jobs and so on. Uh, as a wheelchair user yourself, um, mm -hmm. What 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 what's your been been your main experiences of trying to work in some of the organisations or buildings that you've had to work in? Then, you know, it would be really nice to be able to say, okay, I've got a new role, or I'm thinking about a new role, or I want to apply for a new role, and the only thing you need to think about is the application form. But as a chair user, I don't have that luxury. I have to think not only about the um, employment process and how accessible that is, but I do have to think about the building. I have to think about um, where I'm going to park. Is the pavement going to be on the right side of the road? Are the parking spaces long enough? Do they have um, the hatch lines? Do they have those wonderful, beautiful, heavy glass doors that are not electric in order to show off the beautiful gym that's inside? Does the lift work? Is it a stair lift? Who's going to bring my chair up? And the list goes on. Um, I've encountered all of these and more, sometimes when just going to have a look at a place, let alone think about working in it. So um, there's definitely some challenges. However, people need to be more vocal um, and actually just challenge this place isn't accessible, but I want to be here. What are you going to do about it? So, yes, yeah, so I suppose if, yeah, as you were becoming a gym instructor, um, mm. I'm guessing you had to go to different places to do that, to learn how to become that. Uh, Aspire, as we know, is an accessible place, so that's not a problem. Yeah. Did you do placements where you had to try, to, yeah? What was that like? Yeah, so my placement was with an absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely gym over in East London, but access was a big challenge. So I couldn't physically access all of the place that I was doing a work placement right. in. Was, which was difficult and a bit disappointing. You know in advance because there is a recce to see, you know, how does it work? Is it going to work? 
and I'm a little bit stubborn, just just a tad. Um, and I just wanted to be able to a roll in as I need to, but also once I'm in the space, be able to then direct and say, if you move those things apart, if you do this, if you do that, you could actually create an environment that's open to more people, which every gym wants because they want more people coming through the doors. Absolutely. So Absolutely. So, yeah, so being a bit stubborn, explaining what your needs are, those are the kinds of things that may help. Now, not content with a career in, you know, sport and all that stuff, and then becoming a gym instructor, why not go off and study for a sports degree? I mean, why not do that, you know? what What's that like? I mean, what's because that's what you're doing, isn't it, now? Yes, I'm currently in my final year. Um, I'm doing it part time to make it again a little bit more accessible. Um, it's been a learning curve, and that's not even a pun for the fact that I'm in an educational environment. And it isn't just learning about how I learn. I didn't find out until I started there that I'm actually quite dyslexic. I had okay. no idea. So. Being in an educational environment is definitely teaching me about me, which is quite cool. What's also cool and again challenging is finding out if the space is suitable and that's not just the physical space but it's also the content on a course. Am I seeing enough of me reflected in what I get back? So examples within modules when we're doing coaching, is it stuff that would be available to a all people so it's quite good being in an environment where they're open and they're welcome actual information and how can we do better but as I always say there is more that can be done so I'm loving it it's massively challenging however again it's around that whole how much can I communicate and how much do I want to so yes I mean it seems very common that whenever someone like yourself comes along to take on a, a new challenge like a degree you've got to also take on some of the issues that surround accessibility and all of that stuff aside from the learning so I mean in a sense that leads us on to the reason in a sense why we're here which is to talk about the employability leisure guide which is aimed at getting disabled people into yeah. the sport and fitness industry how do you think the guide will help Vanessa because it probably wasn't around was it when you started no, I guess um, the instructability courses that I did were the precursor to right. actually these guides being um, facilitated. I'm hoping that it not only empowers but gives the confidence to a person who lives with a disability or impairment to be able to knock on a door or as I would just wheel straight into it and say I am employable I would like to be here, I want to be part of this workforce and these are the things that would aid that in happening. To me that's what, I, that's what I'm hoping for because there are guides for different areas, so there's guides for employers. This particular one is for people like me, people who have a, a difference in what they need when they're, when they're working but it doesn't mean that we can't work. So. No. I say use it as a, a platform or, well I was going to say just smack someone on the head but that's probably not <laughs> um, But essentially use it, as, use it as a microphone to raise your voice and to learn about the different things that you can request, challenge and enable to happen so that you can go and work in an industry that is pretty cool. So, as we come to the end of our time together, given all the experiences you've had and the ones that are still going on, because you're still in the middle of your career, aren't you? Um, what advice might you offer somebody who, say, like you were all those years ago, starting out? What, what would you suggest they, they have to manage well? Um, the first thing I would say is three words, try a tin. Try a tin. That's, that pretty much is how I've gotten to where I am. And around that is sometimes a pathway isn't always that smooth, but it doesn't mean that it can't change or the surface can't be changed. So I say try, have a go. Don't wait for it to be perfect because you might miss out on some really interesting um, learning experiences and other people are always learning from you being in their presence. 
So I say try it in, utilize the guides, have a good nose through them and pass them on to other people because having this type of information all in one place is wonderful. It's so helpful. Having the guide for employers, even better. They can match up and conversations can be started. So like me, talker, however you communicate, use the guides to communicate that you want to be seen, you want to be employed, and you want to have a positive impact on other people around you. So try it in and see what happens. Brilliant. That's really, really helpful. Thank you so much, Vanessa. And I think we all want to wish you very well in your future career, particularly bringing home some golds. Be very nice. Uh, but <laughs> take care of yourself and thank you for your time. Thank you. And I hope you see everybody in the gyms.